Hi there, I'm Toby and this is Bad Fishing Habit. Today we're going to be covering tips on how to improve your anchovy rigging using the Reese Davis teaser heads. This is really uncomfortable and it was a horrible idea. Okay, let's go. Okay, these tips are meant for beginner to intermediate saltwater anglers, so they might seem basic or common sense to you more experienced guys. Also, I'm not saying this is necessarily the best way to do it. This is just how we set up our anchovy rigs and it works really well for us. Usually we get bit when other boats don't and we suffer very little gear failure, which is what you want. So to start, this is the Reese Davis anchovy teaser head made by Gibbs Delta Tackle. I'm sure you guys have seen these before. For us, uh, these four patterns over here are our go-tos. We've got the uh, green speckleback or yellow speckleback, and we've also got the uh, glow bloody nose and the black dot orange nose, as we call it. Also a glow. Actually, all of these are glow, but definitely, I don't know, if I had to pick two to only, if I only had two in my bag, uh, those two would probably be it. Green speckleback and uh, the bloody nose. So real quick, for those of you that don't know, uh, this is how you rig up uh, your leader and hooks to this teaser head. So here we're running 30 to 40 pound mono with tandem hooks about two and a half, three inches apart. These knots here are both uh, bait loop knots. I'm sure you could probably go with a uni knot on, on this back one here, or uh, there's another knot that's really popular around here called the river's inlet knot. You can see that with the bait loop knot at least, the two ends of the, of the line coming out of the knot face directly away from each other, so that helps to keep this second hook in line with the first one. It's not, you know, it's not facing this way or something something crazy, so. So after we get those uh, tied on there, I'm not going to show you how to tie the knots. Um, there's plenty of tutorial videos on YouTube, but uh, once you get those ones on, you know, you can give yourself a good length, obviously, a leader. From the hook side, you're going to feed the leader through this little uh, round knot right there, a little slot goes through there, that's where you're gonna add a toothpick to give yourself tension. And then the line goes inside the head through that little hole and then out through the nose right there. And then the other end runs all the way out to your barrel swivel or a bead chain, in our case, a bead chain. So that's how you rig it up there. And I'll show you with the toothpick in a second here because um, that's one of the tips actually. All right, so tip number one is adjust your leader length for the season. So up here on the coast of BC, we are fortunate to get two different seasonal runs of Chinook salmon. The larger of the two is in the summer run, which starts in late June and runs till about mid-September. For the summer runs, we usually use six foot leaders from the end, of the, the end of the trailer hook all the way out to the bead chain, six feet. And this seems to give us the right amount of action on the bait for these fish to bite. For the winter run chinook, uh, which happens in November or December, these fish tend to be more passive, so we move it to a seven to seven and a half foot leader, uh, which gives the anchovy or or you can use or a spoon as well, uh, gives it a little more action to entice the bite. Tip number two is using mono, not fluoro, for your leader material. Uh, now I'm sure some of you will disagree with this, but our thinking is this, so just hear me out. First, these fish are not that leader shy, so they, the advantage of running fluoro is kind of lost here. Second, mono has more stretch inherent in it than fluoro does. When you're fighting these huge, big, powerful fish, between that and the current and the wind, you know, having a little bit of stretch of the line, a little bit of give, could be the difference between you landing that fish or um, shacking it off. The other thing about mono versus fluoro in this case is that in this kind of fishery, we're, you know, we're locked into downriggers, the, the rods are being held in rod holders, so we're not concerned about feeling bottom or feeling the bite. You'll know when you get a bite, typically, <laughs> in salmon fishing. So tip number three is go with heavier leader. So even though the average range of Chinook caught in our area is between 12 and 25 pounds, we do get the odd 30 plus. So again, factoring in strong currents and wind, uh, a little more strength in your line increases the likelihood of landing the big one. The other reason to go with 30 to 40 pound test is to have that ability to horse a fish in when you need to. Like if you're catching and releasing fish, it's never a good idea to play them out for too long as you can exhaust a fish out uh, to the point where they won't recover, which you know is no good and that sucks. And also seals. There are a lot of them around up here and they are smart little SOBs. They will stalk your boat, wait for you to hook up, and then swoop in for the easy meal. So having the ability to horse that fish in quick might save you from the, 
you know, telling the story that we've all heard a thousand times before about getting sealed and, well, quite frankly, fishermen aren't the most sympathetic type to that kind of story anyway, so. Okay, tip number four is uh, selecting the right pair of hooks for your fishery. And I'll, I'll explain what I mean by that. So we typically run larger hooks, uh, usually five aughts, for a couple reasons. Uh, one, so that you're not bending the hooks and losing fish. Uh, and two, that uh, we reduce the chance that we're not hooking the fish too deep in the mouth. So with uh, tandem hook combinations, of course, you can go with, uh, you know, go single, single, front to back, uh, treble, single, like this one here. Uh, go single, treble, like these ones here. Or, uh, you know, if the going gets tough, then you can go treble, treble. My advice is if you're in a fishery where you get a lot of bycatch and you, you'll be catching and releasing a lot of fish, either because they're undersized or oversized or they're uh, not in season, I would go with um, you know two single hooks or triple single, like this one here. This is going to reduce the chance of the fish getting hooked deep and also decrease the time spent trying to clear the hooks out of the net so that you can get the fish back in the water right away. Uh, or get your lines back in the water so you don't miss the bite. So conversely, when the fishing gets tough and every hookup counts, then maybe you go to single treble like these ones here. So the treble is the trailer hook. And then, you know, personally, we don't ever fish treble treble uh, for the conservation reasons mentioned previously. Okay, tip number five is pre-wet your toothpick. Sounds kind of dirty, I know. So the way that this teaser head works, for you that don't know, is that you need a toothpick to go into this little hole right here. If you can see that right there. So normally you put the toothpick in there. That creates tension on the line so that when you put you know, your hooks into the anchovy, so this one here would go, just starting behind the, the dorsal fin, would go in and try to hook it up, up underneath the spine. And then you pull your line taut and that would create your bend. But uh, the one trick we learned from a guide actually is that anytime he's about to recharge the bait, bring up the lines and, and switch out the anchovies uh, for a new one is he takes his toothpick for the next rig and he sticks it into his mouth uh, before he starts the process. So what this does is it um, getting it wet starts to expand the toothpick because uh, it's, you know, it's absorbing some, some saliva there. And what happens is that when you push it into the slot, um, being already kind of pre-expanded, you get a nice snug fit, just like that. It's happened to me once on the boat where uh, we didn't do this. We put a dry toothpick pick in there. I pushed it in there as far as, you know, as far as it would go, nice and tight, rigged it up, got my bend, uh, sent it down. And then uh, when it came back up, this hole was cracked, basically. It was all cracked right in there. So what happened is uh, the toothpick went in dry and it was small. I jammed it in there too hard. It went down in the ocean, uh, absorbed all the water, expanded, and blew out the plastic ring, which then everything all goes to hell, obviously, as far as the, uh, the curve of your anchovy. The other thing that can possibly happen is that you put it in dry, send it down in the ocean, and as it absorbs, it starts to push itself out and get loose, and it pops out. So a good little tip there is to uh, pre-wet your toothpick before you stick it in the hole. And I'm totally not trying to be dirty there. It just comes out that way. It's not me, it's you. Trust me, it's, it's you. Anyway, the final tip here is to run your trailer hook back through the anchovy. So until last year, what we were doing is we were just rigging it up like this. So, you know, you got a nice bend in the anchovy, you get a treble hook buried in there, and then we would just leave this guy dangling. And uh, we thought that the idea was that, you know, if the salmon comes up and it, and it short bites the tail, that you know this hook will be back there, and hopefully you you, you, know, you catch the fish in the mouth when they when they miss the anchovy and short bite. Um, but I think what is happening in reality is that uh, while this thing is you know rolling and spinning in the water, is that this thing here is just going all over the place. So chances are that hook's not anywhere near the tail. So what we have been doing is we've been going uh, back through the tail, just like this. Start the start the hook pointing back towards the tail, like that. This really sucks in this plastic, but... Okay, so just something like that, basically. 
Um, you could go straight through the tail too and come on the other side, but it seems simple. We weren't doing it before, but that's something that we've done recently that has really helped us, uh, I think, with our hookup rate. So I think, you know, we might still miss some of those short bites, but a lot of the times those fish will probably come back if they don't feel this hook you know, they'll probably come back and, and take another swipe at it. So what I think we did notice uh, last summer was that our, our landing ratio went up a little bit. Ours was always, you know, pretty good. We didn't lose more than typically, I don't know, 15, 20% of fish hooked, which is pretty good on the ocean. But and I'd say we were batting over 90 last summer. Uh, we did pretty well. So the likelihood that the fish is going to get both these hooks in the mouth or uh, one hook in the mouth and one in the cheek is a lot higher. So again, uh, two hooks in the fish is better than one, obviously, and that just translates into more fish the, to the boat. Anyway, those are my tips for improving your anchovy teaser head rigs. Uh, I hope they were helpful. If so, please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any other tips to share, uh, put them in the comments so myself and others can try them out too. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Now get out in the water and stay fishy. Peace.